I'm here in Ecuador and I've set myself the challenge of seeing what habitats and species I can find within a two hour radius of the capital city, Quito. I've started off here just under 4,000 metres above sea level at the Hoko Toko Foundation's anti sanir Reserve. And this is Paramo grassland and it's not just good for lying around in like this, which is incredibly comfy, it's also home to some really cool species. We've already seen a giant hummingbird, but for me the star of the show is the species that's fighting back from the brink of extinction here. It can weigh up to 13 kilos, has a wingspan of up to two and a half metres, the Andean condor. But it's not just condors and hummingbirds that can be found here. There's also rabbits grazing around and the short-tailed deer. The little pools that we stumble across are full of Andean teal and Andean coots. There's the corunculated caracara, which I've already seen devouring a rabbit. The Ecuadorian hill star, a tiny little hummingbird that makes its home up here. And the black-chested buzzard eagle. Fernando, our guide, and Fernando from the Hoko Toko Foundation have led us up through the Paramo to a slightly higher altitude to this area of Chiquejagua bushes, which I've probably said completely wrong, but it's only found at these high altitudes, and it's a favoured food plant for the Ecuadorian hill star, which we've just had a really brief glimpse of, so we're going to lay here in wait and hope to get a bit of a longer view of one. And with a little bit of patience, we soon got those views. Unlike other hummingbirds, these guys perch on the flower as they feed, instead of hovering. From the Andes at 4,000 metres just southeast of Quito to here, the cloud forest at around 2,000 metres just northwest of Quito, and again within my two hour limit. And this is one of my favourite habitats, but as the name suggests, it can be quite tricky for photography. There's dense tree cover, but also it's almost constantly shrouded in cloud. The diversity of birds here is incredible. There's tons and tons of hummingbirds, but here at least at Tandapa Lodge, I won't be concentrating on them because they're coming to sugar water. Amazing to see, but not the best for photography. Instead, I'm looking for the more natural things. I've seen toucan barbettes flitting around the forest around me. There's wood creepers, and we even found a crimson rump toucanet. And whilst I'm doing all this photography, there's an amazing soundtrack of bird calls. Just listen to it. When you make a lodge in the middle of the cloud forest, of course the animals are going to try and take it back. And behind me here in this block of a couple of rooms, one of the most peculiar birds of the cloud forest, the cock of the rock, which hopefully we're going to track down at a lek at another point, is nesting in a windowsill. These guys would normally nest in riverbanks and kind of under waterfalls, but here it's clearly found this and thought it's the perfect place to nest. We had that cock of the rock nesting at Tandeapa Lodge, and now we've come here to Paz de las Aves, where we're starting the day with probably the most insane lek you can find, a lek of cock of the rocks. The males come here every single day and flap their wings, nod their heads off, all with the aim of impressing a female, and it's all going on behind me here. As if the cock of the rocks weren't good enough, we've got an added bonus has just flown in to perch here, a golden-headed quetzal. And for me, it's probably one of the best looking birds in the Americas. It has the most stunning iridescent plumage. It's not just Cock of the Rocks that make their home here at Paz de las Aves. The owner, Angel Paz, has kind of turned it into his life work to tame some of the most elusive and cryptic forest species you can find here in the Ecuadorian cloud forests. And these species include the tiny ochre-breasted ampitter that shakes its hips to and fro like Shakira, um, but also he has the rufous-headed, yellow-bellied, moustached and giant ampitter, all of which we have seen today. But it's not just ampitters and cock of the rocks, and I know I keep saying that, the list goes on and on. He's also managed to get dark back wood quail, which you'd normally see scurrying across in front of you for a fleeting glimpse, but here they go mad for bananas and with a Angel whistle and a handful of banana, they're anyone's. 
We've come down from the cloud for us for the day in search of a really interesting bird. This bird is the only fruit-eating nocturnal bird in the world. And to find that fruit, they have to be real endurance athletes, covering up to 75 miles per night in search of the food. The bird I'm talking about, oil birds. And there's one just above me here. And they're dotted all about this cave system. The reason they're called oil birds is because back in the day, indigenous peoples would come and catch the squabs or chicks, which can be up to double the weight of the adults, boil them down and take the oil from their bodies. Pretty gruesome. But those kind of practices don't happen around here anymore. And now this is just an awesome birding site and the avian gas station days are over. For me, birds are incredibly interesting, but wherever I go in the world, there's always one bird I want to see. And on this trip in Ecuador, the oil bird was that species for me. After that great encounter with the oil birds at Cueva Los Tayos, we're now heading back up into the cloud forest. But en route, we've stopped off here at Alambi, which is famed for its hummingbirds. But on the river here, which is actually the Rio Alambi, you can also find white cap dippers. Now, these dippers I've had the briefest of glimpses of and I just can't get anywhere near them. They're very different to the European dippers I've worked with in the past. So I'm gonna call it a day here and head up into the clouds. <laughs> 